One of the fastest ways to get better or more fluid with your measurement tools is to measure as many different types of devices and environments as possible. So this could be a measurement microphone in front of different types of PAs, but we can also measure electronic gear. So I just got in my Soundcraft EPM-8 as a little fun console to mess around with, and I thought it'd be a cool project to look at the EQ curves and see if the actual gain range that's stated, the frequency values, the sweepable mids is all as published. So you can do this as well with any type of console, even something on your pedal board if you're a guitar player, uh, but we're gonna be using Open Sound Meter, my Evo 16 interface, and this console to run a little experiment. Like I said, this is just a way to get more comfortable with measurement and have a little fun investigating what is happening. So let's walk through it. So I've got Open Sound Meter here, and this is the measurement software. I'm running this signal generator, and it's running out of these four analog outs. I actually don't need analog out six, but analog three is running into input three on the desk, and this is my measurement signal. And it's passing through the circuit here, going to the fader, and I have it panned hard left, and it's going to mix left. And the mix left then runs out into input three on my Evo desk. Output four is feeding input four, pan right, going to mix right, going into input four. Then analog five is actually the loop. And so this is the reference input that comes back. So we're gonna be comparing uh, and doing two different transfer functions. The first is mix left versus our loop, and the other is mix right. So if I take channel four and I bring it up now, we're seeing mix right come in, and we can uh, turn on this other transfer function, and we can compare mix left versus right uh, and compare the two. So first, we're actually gonna just look at the single EQ circuit, and then we're gonna see if we can match it on the two channels and see what the tolerances are on the desk. A quick note on gain structure, I'm running the generator lower than I normally do, so I don't overload the input here on the console. The gain knob is all the way down, passing through, and the gain knob on the input is all the way down. Then I'm having to gain up the input of the loop just a little bit to get it to the same level, so that they're matched here in open sound meter, and my magnitude here is flat across the zero line. All right, let's start with the high shelf. And so I want to push this to its limits. I'm gonna go here to the high shelf, do a plus 15 dB and see what the shape is. You do command X to capture. Let me do the same thing with minus 15. Then we'll look at it. All right, so what's going on here is a pretty broad, gentle lift. It's, uh, it's not a sharp transition. And I'm also seeing a dip right here. If I'm not mistaken, this is a Gerzen shelf uh, and Michael Gerzen has that. I know uh, some of the Neve EQ circuits have this as well. Uh, someone correct me here if I'm totally off base, but they uh, they cross here and they are mirror mirror images of each other. And I can see the, the max gain range here uh, is at 15 dB here at the top. So it is accurate, So which is cool. Now let's take a look at the low shelf. Bring this back here plus 15 dB on the low shelf. Something I notice already is that this is very close to a tone control or a tilt because it's crossing over the same point as the high. Let me capture it. Now it's minus 15. Let's take a look there. Boom, turn off our generator. And I see these are kind of almost like a butterfly shape. It's coming in and handing off completely. So if I run a uh, plus 15 dB boost at the top and minus 15 at the bottom, I'll hide all these, we should see this tilt. And there it is, minus 15 on the bottom, plus 15 at the top, and there it is, a tilt control. Pretty cool. So it's, it's two shells that can work in, independently, but you can have them work together to do a lot of tonal shaping, if you would like, across the entire frequency spectrum. All right, let's zero these out. Now let's take a look at the midband. It is a sweepable mid. It looks like our Q is fixed, or at least proportional Q. And the bottom of the frequency range is 150, and the top is 3.5K, so that's a pretty generous amount of real estate. So let's start all the way at the bottom, do plus 15 dB, and see where we're at. Let's capture that, minus 15. And looks like we're actually getting a little bit of bonus gain here, because here's... 15 and it's over that so a few db over uh, not a huge deal let's now bring this all the way up and level and then all the way to the top of its range 
I do see that the the center frequency is about 150, so we're good there. And this is sitting about 3.5K, so we are in good shape. I'm getting a little glitch in open sound meter. The little crosshairs aren't moving with me. Let me capture that. Now let's do minus 15. And here we are. Cool. So now I see those four uh, filter shapes here, the bottom of the frequency range, the top at plus 15, and same thing, minus 15, minus 15. So that's what we have here. This is the, the total malleability of the EQ circuit now exposed here very quickly. One question that remains here for me is what is the actual quality factor or bandwidth of this filter? In an open sound meter, I can do Command F or File Add Filter and see if I can get one to mimic the same shape. I'm going to start with a Q of 1. I want to go to 3500 or 3.5K. Oops. And let's try plus 15 dB. And I'll show it. I can now show this filter. We're not quite there, so let's try 17 dB. Now we're at the top, but that's a little skinny. So let me bring this out a little bit. Let's try 0.7. Very close there. 0.65. Oh, I don't think we can have decimal places. So yeah, 0.6. So that's that's really, really close. Let me get an exact 3450, moved it down. Let's try 16.8. And that's pretty close. So I know that this filter, at least at its maximum value, has a Q of 0.6. And I could sweep it around. And so I can use Open Sound Meter to verify that, at least with these values here. Now for our final test, I'm going to compare this channel 3 versus channel 4. So if I increase channel 3, it's going to show us that it is now plus 15 or that high shelf here. But if I mirror it here on channel four, it's coming up to that same value. So we're going to see it change. So that being said, it looks like the shelf on channel three is a little bit higher since it is actually dipping this a little bit. Now let me try the low circuit. I'm going to do plus 15 down here on the left and do it on the right. And we'll see if there are any differences. Just to here. So it looks like it has a little bit more value here. Now I'm going to do minus... At, at the bottom value at 150, minus 15 dB at 150, and then do the same at the bottom of its range here. We actually get a, a little bit of a difference here. So it looks like uh, that gain value isn't quite lined up. So I'm going to fine tune it here. Okay, so mix right, it's uh, the sweepable band right here. They aren't matching for me to get the same shape. Again, this is just normal tolerances within analog desks, especially more affordable models. Uh, but sometimes people really like it. Uh, that's what gives analog vibe. So we're just comparing left versus right or channel three versus four. These are panned out and we're analyzing to see how similar the EQ circuits are. I'm going to bring this back to Unity and let's just try one more thing. Let's bring the shelves all the way down in level. And same thing here on bottom if we see any other changes as well. Uh, not much. So they actually match more in their least uh, posi or their lesser positions than they do at their max values. So anyway, just fun to compare and see what's happening on this desk. All in all, the tolerances are pretty close. In summary, this was a quick way to run a transfer function on this desk and analyze the EQ shapes. I went their minimum and maximum values to show their sweepable range and see if their actual stated frequency range and gain values were accurate. And for the most part, they were. Fun little exercise to get you used to measurement and how to measure gear well. My name is Michael Curtis. Thank you so much for hanging out. I'll catch you next time.